What's up, everybody? This is Ramel. Coming to you uh, from the Small Fry Show. On tonight's video, I want to talk about the time that I had to break a set on a Huawei street in Louisville, Kentucky and drive the wrong way back up this one-way street to get out of there. But before we get too deep in this thing, you already know what I need you to do. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to come join the family. Also, the views and and topics expressed in these videos are minds and minds only. They do not represent the company that I work for. I am not a spokesperson for said company. Now that we got that out of the way, how are everybody doing? Hopefully everybody's great. It's uh, currently Thursday morning, 3.23 in the morning. Um, we leave in uh, Cincinnati. We met with Nashville like we do. And we're going to head back to Columbus. So I posted in the community tab um, pictures from that day. And I said, you know, the caption was the time I had to break a set in Louisville, you know, to because of a down power line. So this is what happened. It was a Saturday morning. I was actually covering a different run. Uh, my guy was off from Nashville. And they didn't send anyone, so my run got canceled. So I filled in on the uh, Glendale, Kentucky run. So you go down to Glendale, Kentucky from Columbus, and you meet um, a guy from Jackson, Tennessee. Well, this guy brought me a Columbus in an empty. So um, when I got there and swapped out, they veered me back up to Louisville. So I go back up to the Louisville terminal, and... Um, get off, you know, you get off at the exit, at the bottom of the ramp, you turn right, you go down, it's like, you go down two blocks to the traffic light and turn right, go over the railroad tracks, make another right, and the terminal's right there on your right, you turn right to the terminal. Well, I noticed the power was out down there, but uh, I noticed that the uh, power was out, and there was a fire truck coming back north, you know, but I'm not thinking nothing, other than just the power being out. So I go to the terminal, gates wide open. I get dropped, hooked, got my trailer that I need to get. Get, you know, go inside, I'm like, oh, the power's out, there too. So I call back to Columbus, I'm like, hey, there's no paperwork for the trailer. There's no manifest. Uh, if you wanna just give me the manifest number and make sure there's no hazmat, I'll come on back with it. But if it's hazmat, it's gonna have to stay because there's no, no paperwork. So they looked it up, they're like, oh yeah, there's no hazmat, here's the manifest number, you're good. So I finished my 30 minute break, come on out. So when you come out of the Louisville terminal, you turn left, go back to the stop sign, turn left, and you go north like three or four blocks, you make another left, and that gets you back to uh, two, I think it's 265, um, and you go north to get on 71 right there. So. As I'm, as I'm coming up to where I need to turn left to get back to the interstate, as I'm making the, I'm already committed to this turn. I'm turning and I'm committed. And, and as I'm turning, I see that the fire truck that was going north when I was going into the terminal was down on this road parked at an angle. And I can see another Old Dominion truck in front of me. So I'm like, man, Old Dominion done, done something. So I get up there, I get out. And the guy come, the old man driver comes back and he's like, the power line's down, we can't get by it. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, like this is crazy. So part of me is frustrated under the fact that if the, the fire truck, what he, I get he's up there so nobody continues on. Um, but if he would have stayed back at the intersection and blocked it from back there, I never would have tried to make the turn because I wouldn't have been able to. But as, after I had made the turn, I was committed because you can't back a setup like that. Um, so 
so we're standing there, we're talking to the fire department. He's like, this line been down since yesterday. Power's been out since yesterday. The residents are coming out. We're sitting there and it's like, um, uh, you know what I explained to him? I said, man, y'all need to block it back there at the intersection. So nobody tries to come down this way, you know? And so the, the other guy, I think he was from Edinburgh, Indiana. And I'm like, man, I ain't trying to, uh, you know, now, now I'm like, it's Saturday, it's the last day before the weekend. I ain't trying to run out of time here. So I, I call Central and I'm like, hey, if you send anybody in here, they cannot come out the way, they, the way they're supposed to because the power line's down. I call Columbus, relayed that message as well. They're like, oh man, if I would have known that, I would have told you I wouldn't even have sent you in there. And I'm like, okay, well, if something happens, that's an update, I'll let you know. So the more I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this one way street and I'm like, you know, I'm talking to the fire department. I'm like, hey, I, I can break this set, but can y'all get the police out here to, to block traffic so we can, we're gonna have to go the wrong way back up this one way street. The other guy was kind of like, man, I really don't want to try it. I don't think we can make it. And so um, I finally got the guy, the fire department was like, you know, the city of Louisville ain't gonna come out here and block traffic for this. And they really don't want y'all driving you know, the wrong way back up the street. He was like, but what I could do is get, we don't, what I could do is go back there and block the intersection as long as you don't cross the intersection. And I said, I don't need to cross it. I just need to get back to it and I can make a left and get, you know, go north and figure out how to get back to the interstate or whatever. I, I, just, I just need to get to the intersection. So my original plan, if they could have blocked traffic was to back back through the intersection and then get them, get them split that way. But with him not wanting us to cross the intersection because of traffic, I said, I can split them, turn them around, re-hook them, and then get out that way. So like I said, the other guy didn't want to do it, but I was kind of like, hey, I'm going to try it because it's Saturday, I'm trying to get home. It's, uh, I ain't trying to run out of time here. I'm about to give it a try. So I dropped the tail trailer, pulled up, dropped the dolly. The, guy, the other guy helped me pulled up, dropped the dolly, and I basically backed back through the street because the fire department had a block where nobody could come towards us. I backed back through the street to a, sp a spot where there was no cars on each side of the road, and I was able to spin it around and get pulled up to drop my lead trailer at this point. Got out, got out walked Walk the dolly down the street. <laughs> Walking the dolly down the street. Got it set, got my tail, got up and got it set. Re got, got back up under my lead. Got it. I was able to get it spin around and get it get it hooked up. You know, the residents are out there like, man, y'all making it happen. So now this guy, he feeling a little encouraged. He got a Kenworth though. The Kenworths don't turn as tight as the Freightliners do. But I'm like, hey, you can do it. I'll watch you, make sure you don't hit your fairing or you know, hit any cars things like that you know I'm, I'm willing to help you get out of here so you know if I want to take the help while I'm here and if you don't want my help I'm gonna get on up out of here you know he was like all right cool let's do it so same thing he dropped his tail got his dolly spun around he went and dropped his lead I walked the dolly down the street he grabbed his tail got his body got back hooked up we was able to get it hooked up and get out of there and then we just basically had to turn north kind of circle the block, come back south, and get around the down power line. Because the power line was down across the, it was at an angle, so it was, you know, a truck would have come through and hit it and just tore it down the rest of the way. It wasn't like it was on the, the ground or anything like that. We just, it, it was blocking the way we, we needed to get out. We couldn't get through. So I, I know I hear, like, people say, hey, don't put yourself in situations to where you may have to break a set. But that was something that, that was really unavoidable on my part because I was already committed to the turn. You know, um, and with it being a one-way street, a residential street, there was no way we had enough room to spin the set around. They would have just got all bound up. Touching each other, flip over, something like that, it's, it would have been a lot. So, um, that was that was my, that has been my one and only time where I've had to break a set out in traffic like that or a situation where I've had to break a set to get turned around. But, you know, those things are going to happen, unfortunately. You're going to have situations where that may happen. And you just got to be able to think and process. And, you know, if you can't break them and get them spun around, then you just got to wait. But if you can, 
you know, take the time to do it. And I put in for all my drops and hooks. It was, it was like, let me see how many it would have been. It was like 16 dropping hooks total. I put them in and Old Dominion paid me for them too. $10 and 10, I think it's 10, two dollars and 10 cents for each one or something like that. So they paid me for all 16 just for that little situation right there. And I put in the notes what happened and they, they paid it. Um, I was happy just to get out of there. It cost me total in time sitting there and getting them broken turn around before we tried to do it. Total, it probably cost me like an hour, hour to 20 minutes, an hour and a half it cost me time wise but I still had enough time to get back to Columbus and I made it home for the weekend but those are things that are just going to happen it's, it's poor for the course you know being able to think and, and work through it and come up with a plan and you know be rational about the plan on if it's going to work or not and if you're trying it and it's not going to work okay cool but you also got to be responsible you know, and get the help you need. Because like I said, we're fighting against a one way and people are still trying to make this turn and you got cars on both sides and you don't want to get up in nobody's grass and damage the grass. And now you got to call the company and they call in the company, the driver was in my yard or he took, you know, sometimes there's irrigation pipes and sprinkler systems in these yards. You don't want to get into messing those up and things like that. So that's stuff you got to watch for. Backing up, it was tight. You know, to be able to back up and, and, and not tear your fairing off. I can say, looking at it, I felt like I had more room than what it was when I actually started doing it. And it was tighter than what it was on that street. I'm like a single pup, you know, cool. But y'all see the picture on how tight it is. You know, and then you're backing up and you gotta watch when you start backing up and pulling forward, there's gonna become a point where the trailer is gonna pivot and it's gonna move backwards while even while you're going forward. So you gotta make sure you ain't hitting no trees. You ain't you ain't hitting no cars. It's it's a stressful situation. But I worked through it and I got through it and I got home. No no equipment was damaged. Everything came out the same way it uh we, we entered. So that's that's what matters. So I figure since I posted those, it'd be a good time to tell that story about um, what actually happened and how I got myself in that situation and how I was able to uh to get myself out of that situation. Then when I left, you know, I, I updated my dispatcher and said, hey, I'm out, I'm rolling. You know, just don't send nobody that way if they're coming that way. And he was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna send nobody there. So thanks for the heads up. So that was that. But as always, make sure you ride to your pickup and your delivery on time and safely. Call your loved ones, tell them you love them. Love on somebody today. But most importantly, be the reason that somebody smiles today. The world needs it now more than ever. It's Sir Mel coming to you from the one and only Small Fry Show, and I'm out. Peace.